There's a thunderstorm outside my house, so I hope this goes well. Have you, a perfectly law-abiding citizen, ever had your magical white crystal seized? No, I'm not talking about your potential cocaine addiction in which your family keeps trying to tell you to quit. I'm talking about Castle Crashers, a game where you level up, earn combos, and meticulously use those combos to defeat bosses exponentially more difficult than the last. Like a dragon, an ice king, Medusa, and a literal fucking husk of corn. Today I'm going to take you through the exhilarating experience of Castle Crashers. Before we get into the actual gameplay, for all you little rascals and haven't figured it out already, there will be spoilers in this video. Tread wisely. Let's start off where most adventures start, choosing a character. I, of course, chose the Green Knight, which looks epic in its profile picture and has a damage over time effect. Surely this decision will not cause any future consequences. After our party gets interrupted by the death of a fellow comrade, we rush out the door and are immediately thrown into the action. We find out that a strange hooded figure comes in, scares the shit out of the king, and takes the magical white crystal. We, as the knight, rush out to defend our kingdom, defeating lots and lots and lots of barbarians along the way to the first checkpoint. A small shot before the main action. We take a small break to <clears throat> obtain pets that were legally obtained and weapons that were 100% gained from the 15 seconds of gameplay that was viewed. But after that, we rush right back into battle, mouth breathing on barbarians with our newly found toxic abilities. We do this for some time until we encounter the first boss, the ram tank battle shit, whatever the hell it is. It, the functionality of it baffles me even after writing this and also playing the game after a few times. We eventually spray it with the raid anti-insect spray long enough for it to spontaneously combust as we earn ourselves our first epic gamer dub. We then raid a nearby outpost, slaughter its inhabitants, and then continue on with the mission. We cross a bridge to enter the final boss fight of the level, the Giga Chad Barbarian. Upon entering this boss fight, we immediately learn that the princesses of the land have been taken hostage and are now under our tender and loving care. We win, we kiss the princess, get back to the map, yada yada, we fight some thieves, steal their Yoshi, take a small shower, kill a giant black thing, and then run from his dad. After that chase, we find ourselves in the river, dying to every single fucking bat known to mankind. We then fight a cat that just got home from Chernobyl and decided to become a domesticated to a bear cult. Kill it and move on with our day. After defeating the recently encountered leader of the bear cult, we find a random ass on Umbrella, almost get beaten to death by professional bodybuilders, climb a mountain, fight a bat with intestinal issues, collecting riches that I'm pretty sure were stored up his ass, and actively causing the ass's problems. After the bat gets brutally massacred, we find ourselves murdering the entire bee population. If you're wondering why I say the entire bee population consists of 12 creatures, me too. After killing the bees and beekeepers, because apparently we have a problem with them too, we get launched from catapults and sent on the possibly the most convenient ledge in this game for the character I am playing. Because of the narrow pass, our AoE poison and splooge does a massive amount of damage. We crash a wedding, murder all of its participants except the groom, and once we challenge the groom, we immediately get tossed like a fucking omelette. After coming back and killing him with literally the easiest cheese ever by simply firing a poison shot and waiting for him to get up, the big boy bodyguard best friend brother, whatever, the relationship is never actually confirmed, he comes and picks up the corpse of the groom and bursts through the side of the wedding, leading us to yet another chase, like seen on the back of this wedding carriage. And would you look at that? Look who's back. It's the dad of the black thing from earlier. So we poison it to death, it fires back, we poison it some more, and then it dies. We run into the top of a cave, goofy uh, cartoon style. Once we enter the cave, we eat some fruit, get jumped by more wedding participants, and literally heaps of slime with eyes. Then we encounter the abandoned, and something I'm now going to dub the marriage carriage. We murder the thieves who are ransacking it, kill more, and I quote, cone heads, and eventually fight the big brother person. It was a very easy fight, but we managed to pull through with sheer determination. And because of our position on the battlefield, it looks like the boss ran over to the lava pit and jumped in, even though he was technically supposed to fall in by accident. I believe that the final mage and the necromancer saw this unfold, felt bad for him, so they come by and resurrect this man and his friend simply out of pity, waiting for the second chance to be proven. When we encounter the lava area, where a bunch of fire demon looking things try and jump us, but we kill them by cheesing it with one move. After we do that a few times, we eat a sandwich, rip a door off its hinges, and right a fire demon village, beat the shit out of a dragon, and finally collect the first piece. After that debacle is complete, we finally raid the industrial castle, murder its inhabitants, and beat up the king. The industrial castle is so incredibly trivially easy that I'm going to decide to brush past this segment and simply move on to the next area. And if you've been paying attention to the end of these tasty little boss fights from the beginning to this point onward, you know that we collected our third piece of golden hardware. We've collected a compass, a wheel, and now a telescope. We can finally cross the Atlantic, which is infested with pirate ships inhabited by ninjas. We dispatch the ninjas appropriately, continue with our adventure, and end up in the mysterious desert. 
We beat up a few scorpions, an odd-looking worm creature, and giant beetles. We then encounter a UFO and murder its pilots, destroy the vehicle itself, and get put into its mothership. After getting abducted by the mothership, we murder everyone inside, finish committing genocide, and proceed to free a prisoner that destroys the ship for us. We run through the ship and escape when the timer is literally already at zero. We then flee the ship and find ourselves in the same desert which we found out is the mythical land of Israel. After beating up its inhabitants, we challenge a few of them into the most native sport to Israel ever, volleyball. We win the game and collect a map and proceed to the next area. Before I detail what happened next, do you remember that stuff that we did at the beginning? You know, picking the green knight, making a magic heavy build. Do you remember that? Do you also remember how I said that there probably won't be any consequences for choosing the build that I did? I lied, if you couldn't already tell. These skeletons have a unhealthy load of magic resistance, meaning magic attacks is weak against them. Meaning, my attacks that previously melted the health of enemies is now like them getting hit in the face with a napkin from a little kid's birthday party. Upon entering this swamp infested by skeletons, I get absolutely violated by a bunch of undead warriors, even after using the beefcake buff. On my second attempt and abusing the beefcake buff still, I managed to squeak by. After that whole debacle was complete, I find myself wandering the march with my beholder friend and immediately get jumped by a bunch of Vietnamese people whose officer probably forgot they existed. We fought another giant black thing, save some villagers, and then make do like a country boy usually does. After eating our veggies like a good little boy, we are rewarded with a horn to enter Medusa's lair. We fight some fish people, more Vietnamese travelers, and Medusa herself. Do not ask me why she wears shoes. I simply do not ponder questions I do not want the answers to. With Medusa now deceased, it's now time to storm a mountain. We fight a bunch of people whom I do not kid are called stove faces, then enter the most dangerous land of all, Canada. We do what any kind American, freedom-loving citizen would do and immediately beat up every single one of the inhabitants and take all of their money. Following the death of every single Canadian ever, finding a literal chicken in the ground, and getting hit by a fallen icicle, we finally fight the Ice King. If I had one thing to say about this fight, I would say that it was incredibly easy. This fight was nothing more than a nuisance to me. A simple obstacle waiting to be conquered. We murder the stupid Ice King who deserves it completely, kiss the princess, and continue our quest. So now, you might be expecting for me to say that I finally stormed the final mage's castle, and you'd be incorrect because my goofy ass forgot to press the record button on that part. To show my frustration at this realization, I will replay the exact words that came out of my mouth at that moment. I started recording afterwards. I'm gonna kill myself. Because of this lost footage, I will simply recreate the storming of the castle and painter boss fight and the undead groom and the other dude fight in Minecraft. Now that that is out of the way, on with the story. Remember the necromancer I mentioned earlier? Me neither. So this fight was also incredibly easy, just like the one that I mentioned previously. So I will simply show how easy it was with another masterful Minecraft recreation. After the death of the necromancer, we finally move on from the final boss of Castle Crashers, this goofy ass looking mage guy. This fight is more of an annoyance than a difficulty, even for a solo player. The most annoying part is that he fires in bursts of three, so if you get hit by the first, you'll most certainly get hit by the last. This boss has a few phases. He has his first one, where he is protected by a bubble that determines what he's weak to. If it's blue, you attack with magic. If it's red, you attack with melee. He has this floating attack where he floats around as a giant ball and shits out these white orb things. That phase is kind of annoying. After that phase, he has a spider phase where he succumbs to more abdominal problems from the bat from earlier and shits out mage people. We dispatch that phase, kill him in his final phase where he just uses a sword, and carry the remaining princess back to the castle on the magic white crystal throughout all the lands that we had previously explored. Before I end this carrying back segment, can I simply point out that the developers did not need to put an alien with an absolute dump truck ass into the game? Anyone who wins the game and goes through this cutscene really loses in the end because they see that. Anyway, we get back to the main party in the castle, finally kiss the last princess, go on a small drug trip because apparently that princess was a clown the whole time, and finish the game of Castle Crashers solo with the best character in the game. Thank you guys so much for watching this incredible journey of mine. I hope you enjoyed it. 
This is a different video that I'm used to posting, so please offer constructive criticism in the comments and not just yell at me if you think my voice is annoying. I also want to say you didn't hear any raw gameplay audio because I was watching South Park in the background with a friend on Discord and I didn't want to get copyright and sent straight back to the back alleys of YouTube's recommendation algorithm. Again, I hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know if you want to see more videos like this. I'm going to go off script a little bit here and uh, say Castle Crashers is an incredibly fun game. There's a lot more to it than I stated in this video and that I showed. And I very much recommend you play it, especially with friends. It's a lot of fun. And I'll probably see you in the next one. So long.